Hello and welcome back to our channel. First, thanks for your continuous support. In today's video, we will discuss about DataWeave. It will be a continuation of our DataWeave series. Today, we will deep dive into the data types that you can use in DataWeave. So let's get started. Creating data. DataWeave 2.0 supports a type system. In this tutorial, we will look into different data types we can use. DataWeave has three types, simple type, composite types, and complex types. Today, we will discuss simple types. Simple type represents values such as string, boolean, and so on. These values are atomic and they are not composed of other values. So what does a simple type entail? These can be string, boolean, number, regex, null, and temporal. Temporal can be of different kinds, date, date time, local date time, local time, time, and period. Let us dive directly into the demo to see different kinds of types. The first step, as we discussed in the last video, is to go to DataWeave Playground. To go there, type dataweave.mulesoft.com slash learn slash, and you will navigate yourself to DataWeave Playground. For this tutorial, I have already created an example for us. Let us deep dive and see what we have in front of us. So on the left, you see, we have a payload example, which I created. It is an object. We will discuss what are objects in the next video. In here, we have different strings and different values inside the payload. And we will try to identify what is the type of each value. To do that, you can simply type type of. The good thing about DataWeave is it prompts different types of things you can write. And it also gives us a little bit of definition as you just saw. Another good thing about DataV Playground is it can take you to tutorials and blogs and the documentation. As mentioned in the previous video, you can export and import a DataV. So without any further ado, let's start finding out what are the different types of the fields we have here. To refer to a field, you can start by writing payload Again, it prompts us dot. This gives us all the possible values we can select from the payload. This is how you refer to a particular field inside a payload or a particular array inside a payload or object. We will discuss all these complex types, array, object in the next video. Type of allows us to find out what is the type of that field within a payload. So if I say type of payload dot type A, this gives us string. So what we can say is the field type A is of type string. And to identify, strings are always enclosed in double quotes. Similarly, let's find out what is type B. Type B is of type Boolean. Boolean can be two values, true or false. And it, it is never enclosed in double quotes and always starts with a small t or a small f. Now let us find out what is type C. Type C is of type number and it is never enclosed in double quotes. It can be any value and as number goes, it can be infinite. Now let's skip type t for now and move on to type E. If I select type E, it gives me null. Null is a type of simple type in DataWeave, which is always written in small characters and never enclosed in double quotes. If I enclose it in double quote, it becomes a string and hence it is not a null type. So you need to be careful of what you enclose in double quotes and what you don't. It is always similar with any other data type. As we know, type C was number, but now that I've enclosed it in double quotes, it has become 
string. But if I remove the double quotes, it will go back to being number. And, it, and the same will follow for type B. In the presentation, we spoke about temporal data type and regex data type. If you look closely at type D, we have some weird characters that we have explained here. Since it is a payload, I cannot type the regex type, but I can always write it in the script and show you how regex work. Highlighted here, I have defined a variable, my string, and I've given it a string value of mycompany.com. How and why we define variable, we will discuss it in the future videos, but just for understanding sake, to define a variable, we write var, which is a keyword, and the name of the variable, in my case, it is my string, followed by an equal sign, and then you can define your variable. This can be a string, date time, a function, an object, an array, or whatever you like. We will discuss further about it in the future videos. So I'll teach you one more thing, how you can comment out your TeraView script. You can do it by placing two forward slashes in the beginning of the script. I'm gonna undo this script, which I've already written. If you see, this is a similar characters as mentioned in type D in the payload. I have defined a field or a string value find, which will serve as a header for me. And then I have called my string. If you define a variable in the data weave script, you can call the variable just by its name directly. There are other ways to call variables, which we will talk in the future videos. Find. Let us talk about find. Find is a keyword which is used in the regex capture group. There are many more keywords where you can do a lot more while adding it with the regex. And I can show it to you by typing in regex data weave and going to the documentation. It's the first link over here. In here, if you will see, we have multiple predefined functions which we can use to do multiple tasks. Now, let's first stop and talk about what is regex. Regex is nothing but an acronym which we use for regular expression. This is not related or not specific to data weave, but in general, we use it on, and we have seen it across multiple different languages. Regex is essentially a combination of characters which helps us to find, accept, or regulate, and return or check or matches within our script. To create regex, you can find multiple online resources, but the one I like to use is regxr.com, where you can create any expression. It also gives you a cheat sheet, which tells us what each character symbolizes. We will add the link to this in the description box. Coming back to our tutorial, in here, we are trying to find out if the, the string value we have defined for our variable has the character n or the character n, where at what index it exists, and I want to find it until the end of the string. When I type this reg regular expression, what is seeing the output is each indexes where I can find either M or N character until the end of my string value. So let us count. I see an M on the zero index. As you can see on the output, we see zero. The next comes on the fourth, seventh, and the twelfth index. And the output has given us exactly that. So this is how you can define a regex type. The next is temporal. The temporal data type has multiple data types in it, or I would say multiple values in it. It can be of type date, date time, local date time, local time, time, and period. 
Let us discuss in detail what each one of them means. To do so, let us come back to the midsection of script and see what are the other things that we have defined. If you notice, I have defined one more variable called a, to which I have defined the value now. Now is a keyword in data weave, which gives us the current value of date and time. Another different thing that I have here is import. Here, what I'm importing is everything from the DW core periods library. What it means is it will allow me to use the temporal period type to modify my data weave to get a period or enhance a date time into a different period as of my accord. So let us come back and, and see what does the value A gives. So if I come here and simply type A, as mentioned before, if we define the variable in the script, we don't have to use var sort, we can directly call it by the name of the variable. So once I type in A, it gives me the time date now. Temporal means we can define it in different ways. So what I can do is, I can do a as, now the prompt will give us what we need. And if I say date, it's gonna give us the date of today. Now, if I go back and start typing ti, it gives me date time. And as soon as I click on it, it's gonna give me date along with the time and the time zone. I can modify it to give me my local time. So if I do a local date time, it gives me the local date time, and this is what the time is right now. Similarly, I can use different other keywords to define the date and time in different values and different ways. So instead of local date time, let me just get local time, and I get the time. And similarly, I just do a time, it gives me time. There are other ways to define, if you saw there's a time zone, it gives me the time zone, Z. Now what's interesting is period. This is a different data type, which allows you to enhance your data time. I would like to go and show you the documentation for period before discussing further. So let us go back and write period data leaf. And it gives us the documentation right here. I highly rely on use of documentation because it's very explicit. So in here, if you read thoroughly, I'm just going to give you a gist of it. If you read thoroughly, what period allows us to do is, it allows us to show how we want the input to behave. So let's say, for example, I say this is the date time and I say minus period day one. So it's going to decrease the date by one day. So the output is going to be 2020-10-04. Similarly, I can add a day to it. I can add years, months, and days to it. I can just give it up as empty. I can define a particular period and so on. So if you look at each output, what we see is, as I mentioned, this is gonna subtract a day and it did. We can add a date we can add a particular period, which can be anything, and so on. So going back to our data week script, the time right now we have 18th of June, 2023. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one day to the period. And what it's gonna do is, it's gonna add a day, and instead it's gonna give us the exact same time, but with tomorrow's day. And that's how you can use period in your data weave scripts to enhance the date and time and, and play with it however you see fit. With that, we have covered today's topic of simple data types, and we will see you in the next video with composite data types. I hope you enjoyed the video and please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much and see you next time.